excuses. I want an explanation. Adam uh, wanted us to come over right away. Well, actually, he ordered us. I just really got more questions about the murder. I'm so sorry that you had to find Maisie that way, oh, sweetie. Oh, I still can't believe she's dead, I know. Rachel. Look, Andrews, you know good and well nothing goes into print until I okay it. Uh, Rachel, if this is a bad time. No, it's not. He's just upset with one of his editors. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know why. Yeah, they printed all the details of the murder in the paper. That's not an answer, and you know it. Wow. What is it? It's the whole story about the... about the serial killer. Names, dates, everything. Let me see. But it's your department, man. Excuse me. Uh, person, get a sleep around here. Before this day is over, believe you me, heads are going to roll. Where is you I told you to keep your mouth shut about that note that you found on Maisie's body. Now, wait a minute. You got five seconds to explain. Now, start talking. Will. She didn't want a funeral. She just wanted uh, friends gathered to remember her. If anybody could forget her. I wouldn't even have this place if it wasn't for Macy. Well, I sure wouldn't be here. I was ready to turn in my apron after the first day. But Macy. Maisie made me feel me, but she made me feel like family. She made all her friends feel that way. That's why this is going to be done, the way Maisie wanted it done. And I'm going to kick somebody's butt from here to Chicago after it's over. Somebody has got to tell me. Why Maisie died the way she did. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Let's just pick up the tempo at the top, okay? Got it. See you tonight. Okay. Okay. Hi. I need to talk to you about Michael. What about him? Can we go to my room? Why? What's this all about? Betrayal. Maybe. Maybe? What's that supposed to mean? Did anyone ever tell you you've got lousy manners? Yeah. You're lucky I don't get on that phone and call my father's security well, after people. After you hear what I say, you just might. But that's all right. Things are desperate. You gonna hear me out? If something's happened to Michael... Yeah. Something might if he's in big trouble. Where is he? Look, you're about the only person that I can trust now, and I need your help. Why don't you just start at the beginning? Like I said, he's in big trouble if he's not dead. What? What happened? Last night, he went out in search of your sister. Donna, where? Tell me, Mitch. Look, the point is, he hasn't found her. Otherwise, we would have heard something from him. Well, that's why I haven't seen him around. Are you sure about this? Look, I had a feeling if he was going to do something. I left him alone. Maybe if I hadn't done that, thing. Well, we've got to find him. I'm going to call the police. You do that, and I guarantee you, Donna and Michael will be dead. Go on. What are you waiting for? Dial. So you read the note on Maisie's body, and you couldn't wait to get to a typewriter. Hey, the dailies are the ones who printed it. 
and who leaked it to the dailies. Adam, why would you accuse Tony of leaking the story? I've seen this kind of thing a hundred times before, Mac. These reporters get really hard-nosed. They do anything to break a story. Look, if there was a leak, you guys can blame yourselves. I told you a long time ago you couldn't keep this kind of information under wraps indefinitely. Oh, I see. So you just take it upon yourself to break the story to the whole world. Is that it? No! Fellas, you're getting a little overwrought. Look, I don't operate that way. I gave this a lot of thought, and I decided I couldn't print that story. And I backed him up 100%. Unfortunately, one of my editors took it on himself to print what the police wanted kept quiet. When I find out who did it, he's gonna be yesterday's news. Well, who would do something like that, Mac? I don't know, but I'm sure gonna find out. Yeah, well, I don't think you're gonna have to look very far. You're way off, man. Now, come on, Adam. The guy said he had nothing to do with it. Mac, I think your cub reporter over here took that information and sold it to one of the reporters for the daily. Oh, come on. That guy will. You don't think you were really going to get away with that, do you? You think Mac wasn't going to catch on? Look, man, I never printed anything. You got that? I never would do that, Mr. Corey. Tony's right, Mac. Look, I know this means a, would have meant a lot to me to break this story. It's a big chance for me. But there were other things to consider. Right, Tony and I talked all about it. You don't get it, do you? Listen, the details of this story are out now. It's like sending a, a red flag up to the killer. He knows we're onto him. It's going to take twice as long to catch this guy now. Look, I'm really sorry oh, about sorry? That. I warned you. I told you what was going to happen. And I told you! Adam, Adam, look, I know how frustrated and angry this must make you. Look, I'm talking about months of work here, Mac, and this guy's just blown it! Yes, I know that, but I just have a hunch that Tony isn't the one that did it. He had the note right in his hand! I don't think he did it because he's known too much for too long. Isn't that right, Tony? I did my homework. Yes, so I understand. I had a complaint from the coroner's office. You know what I'm talking about. I guess I'm caught, huh? Are you still after Vince McKinnon, Captain? Now, you know I am, Ada. I just wanted to pay my respects to Maisie. She was quite a girl. Yes, she was. She didn't deserve to die the way she did, and she wouldn't have if you weren't so busy chasing Vince McKinnon. You know that's not true. I know my friend is dead. Look, we're questioning a boyfriend, Dave, right now. Dave is crazy about her. Ada, we're going to find out who did this. Now, you can take my word on that. Is that supposed to make me feel better? No. But I wanted to tell you that. Good. You told me. There's one other thing. Don't. Huh? I think I know what you're going to say, and don't say it. Not today. No, no, this isn't about Vince now, Ada. It's about Cheryl. What about Cheryl? Well, I thought one of you ladies might tell me where she is. Why? Is there a problem? Your sister and uh, Mr. LaSalle, or does he call himself love? What is it you want to know about Scott and Cheryl? Your kids are missing. I thought you might want to tell me where they are. This part of another world is brought to you by Ivory. So, where are Scott and Cheryl? They're in front of the house. What? Uh, Cheryl. They spent the night at a friend's house. And this morning, she and Scott, uh, <clears throat> left on a skiing trip. Right. right. Skiing, huh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. A father's on the lam, a mother just got out of jail on bail. A friend has been murdered and she's out skiing? Well, Captain, there's not anything that Scott or Cheryl could do about any of that. Well, what about school? What, if they just cut classes in the middle of the week? Sure. I used to do it all the time. College kids always do that. Of course. So she had your permission? Naturally. Anything else? Well, when <clears throat> Cheryl gets back from her skiing vacation, you tell her I want to talk to her. I certainly will. The memorial service won't be for an hour yet. I know, Ada. I'll be back. I want to be here. Good. The police should be represented. 
You should have a first-hand look at all the pain and unhappiness you've caused around here. Ada, I'm going to be here because I want to be here. Because of Maisie, all right? Business today, MJ, I had a seat. We've got a memorial service here for Maisie in a little while. Do you mind? I'm not sorry about what happened to her. I mean it. She was a nice lady and she didn't deserve this. No, she didn't. Of course, neither did Linda. Or the two girls before her. Well, why are you looking at me like that? Women, innocent women, are dying out there, Chad. I swear to you, I had nothing to do with this. Not in any way. You've got to believe that. I asked you for your help, Chad. Don't you think I want to help you? Don't you think I want to nail this creep who did this to Linda? I just don't know anything. Well, why don't you think, Chad? Maybe you're not trying hard enough. Look, the cops are swarming all over Tops, and they have been since last night. They're hassling the employees, and they're, they're asking a lot of questions. I'm just trying to keep a low profile. Oh, come on. How long do you think it's going to take before somebody puts two and two together? Figures out that both of us knew, Linda. If we don't panic... Oh, don't gonna... panic. Any minute now, Adam is going to remember that he met Linda at the Northwoods Inn, and then he's going to know I'm lying. And then it'll probably all come out. About you and me. What exactly were you caught doing, Tony? I was nosing around the coroner's office and the precinct. And I got into a couple of places that, uh, that I shouldn't have. And the guys at the coroner's office caught me and threw me out. And then they called me. <sighs> Mr. Corey almost fired me. What? But the point is, Tony has had all these facts for a long time. How long? Two weeks, at least. Oh, terrific. I knew the killer's M.O., and I knew about the notes he left in the victim's bodies, too. So if he wanted to, he could have passed this information along weeks ago. Yeah, but he didn't. Like I said, there were other things to consider. Yeah, Tony wanted to do the right thing. It's been a real dilemma for him, Mac. I believe the public has a right to know that there's a killer on the loose, Mr. Corey. But I didn't want to interfere with the police investigation, either. Well, that is a dilemma, isn't it? And, uh, I wanted my own byline and a raise. <laughs> but, uh... The bottom line is, is that I have a conscience. Even though he wanted to publish the story, Mac, he didn't. And he couldn't do it. And he could never let anybody else do it either. If I wanted to publish the story, I could have done it long before now. And that's the truth, Mr. Corey. I believe you. And I admire your integrity. I blame one of my editors for this. I guess it sounds like the truth. I don't know. Maybe if I hadn't been up all night... Maybe I wouldn't have come charging in here like Not that. I don't know. Did I hear an apology? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I guess I jumped the gun. Yes, you did. But uh, I guess I understand. Hey, Nancy. Are you really serious about this guy? Sit down. Adam. No, I think we all ought to get to know Tony a little better. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, after all. Nancy is like my kid sister. Guys, cut it out. <laughs> oh, seriously, he has to pass must with the whole family if he wants to date our Nancy. That's right. Okay, put me to the test. Anytime. You think your sister just disappeared into the night? Why would he kidnap her? Maybe because she was getting better. No, I can't believe that. Maybe you don't want to believe. He's my father. I have to believe that somewhere inside and there's someone who wants Not to protect it. Oh, will you cut that out? Do you care about your sister? Yes. Do you love her? Of course. Then get off the fence and help me. I know you've always stood up for Donna and Michael. And I always will. Then don't stop now. They need you. Are you going to help me? Yes, I'll help you. Even if it means betraying Reginald? Can you go against your father? I can do whatever I have to. This is terrible. A nightmare. A disaster. That does seem to be the order of the day in the Love family lately. It's Hudson, isn't it always? You don't understand, Dad. My people have taken him prisoner. 
That's not a disaster. That's a cataclysm. Well, I've been talking to a lot of agents and managers, and uh, all their people seem to be really interested in the, uh, the club and... Uh, Felicia? Mm-hmm. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Oh, I guess I just can't concentrate on anything today, huh? That's all right. I understand. I'm here if you need me. I just want you to know that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Listen, uh, I think I'd better go finish getting ready for Maisie's service, okay? I'll see you later. All right. Uh, listen, you two want to ride later? Maybe you better go without us. You, you're both coming to the service, though, aren't you? We're going to try to. If it's at all possible, we'll be there. Does this have something to do with Michael? You better go on. Just be careful, okay? The third castle? Yep. Look, I know you gave Michael your word not to say anything to me, but I'm running out of time. We're going to have to make a move on this. I know. I just hope we're not too late. I just wonder how we're going to get them out of there. Are you two still here? <clears throat> um, Tony was just helping me write a eulogy for Maisie. Listen, Tony, I'm, um... I'm really sorry about what happened here before. It's okay. I mean, Adam's just been working on this case night and day, and I think he's just on edge a little bit, probably from lack of sleep. Well, I'm sorry about that press leak. But I warned him weeks ago that sooner or later somebody was going to get a hold of that story. Yes, and unfortunately it wasn't somebody as responsible as Tony. Well, look, you're both really on the same side here. You both want to catch the killer. Oh, well, yeah. I just hope he realizes that. <clears throat> so, uh, were you two guys really serious before about uh, me passing muster with the whole family? <laughs> of course they weren't. Well, no, I don't know. Hold on here. We were sort of, sort of serious. Weren't you on your way to Mary's place, Jamie? Oh, no, it's still pretty early. Ignore him, okay? Actually, there were just a couple of things I wanted to ask Tony. Uh, this just out of curiosity, of course. It's not funny, Jamie. It's okay, Nancy. Honest. It's not okay. And I just wanted to ask him where he studied journalism. Studied journalism at the University of Chicago. Born and raised in the Windy City. Two parents. Happily married. Um, brother, sister. Uh, two Irish setters, one cat. A canary, but it died. Uh, I have no debts, can't afford a credit card. I'm single, employed as a gopher and part-time cub reporter. Uh, your stepfather hardly pays me anything at all. <laughs> uh, I have all 32 teeth, two tonsils, and as for Nancy, uh, I'm crazy about her. You gotta act fast. Hudson could ruin all we've tried to accomplish. I haven't accomplished anything. I've lost Mary. She'll never come back to me. She'll never even speak to me again. Dad, what about me? What about all I've done? I really don't care what happens to you, Peter. You don't really mean that, Dad. You're just terribly overwrought. And it's all because of Michael Hudson. Is it? Yes! Look, I know you only want what's best for Donna. That's why I took her to the castle. I knew it would give me time to, to convince her that what she's done marrying Hudson is terrible for this family. I can still do it. What if I got the yacht out, put Donna on board, and just took on? That would give her time to realize what she's doing to this family. Of course, I'd have to take Hudson along, but I could keep the two of them separated. Donna doesn't even need to know he's on board. I could still salvage the whole situation. What do you think, Dad? I don't care what you do. I'm washing my hands of the whole thing. You really don't mean that. Oh, but I do. I want the yacht ready for sailing immediately. Damn it, I don't care about the ice. Just get it ready.
chosen your side, haven't you? Next part of Another World. What side are you talking about? The one that leads out that door and away from me. You're not making any sense, Father. I see all the signs. You see what you want to. It's in your eyes, Nicole. You've changed. You're not going to be the peacemaker anymore. You're going to let our family split in two. If this family splits, it won't be because of me. It'll come as quite a shock to your brother. What's going to come as a shock to me? Nothing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very curious. I want to know what Dad meant. Why are you so jittery, Peter? I'm not. Something's wrong, isn't it? Of course not. Have you heard any news about Donna? Donna? No, not a word. I'm really worried about her, Peter. Well, I think we all are, Nicole. What about Hudson? I haven't seen him around lately. Have you? Michael's probably out searching for Donna. <laughs> We've got the police and all of our security force out looking for Donna. He'll just bungle the whole job. He might find her. Maybe he already has. Then why hasn't he brought her back here? Hmm? You tell me. Nikki, you still haven't told me what Dad meant before. Yes? Captain, I don't care. I don't care if it costs double time or triple time. We are sailing tomorrow. Is that clear? And one other thing, there's going to be a special crew on board. A very special crew. Right. Uh, uh, you still haven't answered my question, dear sister. I just remembered sister. I have an appointment. I forgot all about it. I want to know what Dad meant when he said something was going to come as a shock it to me. It wasn't anything. I don't remember. Nikki. Peter, will you let me pass? Now look, I'm going to stand here until I find out what Dad meant. I don't care if we have to stand here all day. Well, I think that should do it. It's yeah. perfect. I'm really proud of you, Nancy. I mean, do we care about your friend so much? Yeah, well, Maisie was much more than a friend. She was family to us. I know. Look, I gotta get back to Brava. I'll see you at the service. Yeah. Uh, Tony, um... I want to let you know that I was really proud of you, too. I mean, the way you stood up to Adam like that. And I know Mac was very impressed. Thanks. And thanks for taking my side, too. Well, I know you couldn't have leaked that story. And I'm still going to be big someday, Nancy. I want to break that big story. But I'm going to do it right. No shortcuts. I know you will. Um... Another thing. You know, before when you said to Jamie that you were crazy about me? I am. Is that all? Um, is there nothing more? You know there's more. There's much more. As far as you know, Dave never left this party until he and Maisie left at the end of the evening. That's right. Are you thinking that he was... Oh, hey, look. I want to answer every question. Oh, that guy must be pretty messed up. Yeah, I think he's pretty upset. What about the guys you knew in prison? You ever see any of them? I can't, even if I wanted to. It's a parole violation. I'm staying clean. Had to ask. No problem. Any luck? Well, all the guests that were on the list showed up. No gate crashers to speak of. Sorry. Hi. Ooh, you look pretty beat. Yeah. You look a little rattled. No, I'm not. It's just uh, preparations for Maisie's 
service, I guess. <laughs> Why are you staring at me? I guess I'm just tired. Are you sure that's it? Look, MJ. <clears throat> I ran a computer check on Linda last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It took me about half the night to do it. And then all of a sudden it came to me where, where I know her from. Um, I was... MJ, why didn't you tell me that you knew her? MJ, you were the one who introduced me to her. I know. It, it was that night. It was night. that night at the Northwoods Inn at the bar. And you told me she was some old friend of the family. Right. Uh, well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, actually, she was a friend of Kathleen's. I guess that's probably why I didn't place her right away. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are, are you telling me that you didn't recognize Linda? I only met her myself that night. I guess I just didn't make the connection, you know, until this morning. This morning? Yeah, it, it has been driving me crazy. I couldn't get her face out of my mind. I knew I recognized her from somewhere. And then suddenly, <laughs> it, it just clicked. This morning? Right, so I came right over here to tell you. Why are you looking at me like that? Don't you believe me? You introduced me to a woman who was killed a couple of weeks later, and you're telling me that you're just now putting all yes. this stuff together? Yes, yes. It's the truth. You're a good cop, MJ. And you're a smart girl, too. So, you see, it's very hard for me to believe that you just didn't recognize her. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I had something else in my mind, okay? Anyway, why are you giving me the third degree? It's very simple. I didn't recognize her first, and then I did. That's now, it. As I remember, you were pretty eager to get away from her at the bar, weren't you? Why was that, Emily? I told you. I, I, I mean, I hardly even knew the girl. I didn't even know her last name. Yeah, I was eager to end the conversation. I wanted to be alone with you. Anything else you want to tell me? No, because there's nothing else to tell. Look, Adam, I don't think the fact that Kathleen knew this girl and that I met her once that night at the Northwoods Inn has any bearing on this case. You've been risking off vice for weeks, MJ. I think it's time we did something about it, because I think you're cracking right up the middle. Dad meant, Nicole. All right, I was trying to spare your feelings, Peter, but if you must know, Father is really disappointed in you. Why? What have I done? He was shocked to learn that you were connected with the murder of that prostitute. <sighs> Look, that was all something I explained to him. It was a big mistake. Like the whole business with Brittany was a big mistake? The trial barely ended a couple of weeks ago, and already you've got the love name dragged through the mud again. Is that what Dad thinks? I tried to spare your feelings, Peter. But sometimes you just don't think. How could you do this to Dad, and right after his heart attack? I was not... I had nothing to do with that woman's murder. You just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's exactly right. You are a disgrace to the love family. I never thought I'd say it. Nikki, I am the only one who cares about this family. Then why aren't you out looking for Donna? Why haven't you leaned on the police? Don't you want to find her? Don't you care? Oh, I care about Donna. I care more than you know. If you really want to take over this family someday, you better start cleaning up your act, big brother. Because you're going to have to get a whole lot smarter if you ever expect to fill Reginald Love's shoes. Lisa this morning. Well, she says she's still a little shook up. She 
She blames herself for not getting to Maisie in oh, time. It wasn't her fault. She tried to do everything she could as soon as she got that premonition. Well, I, I, I think she just needs a little time to deal with that. Yeah. Must be awfully frightening to have those kind of feelings. She just doesn't want to talk about it. I, yeah. She is frightened by it now. So, um, you think she'll be staying in um, Bay City for a while? Well, I, I hope so. She is my favorite niece, and it feels good to have family around me right now. Oh, no, I agree. I agree. Are there um, any other members of her family coming to visit? Well, not that I'm aware of. She's not married? Well, the two of you, uh, you must have hit it off, huh? Well, I certainly hit it off. I don't know how she feels about it. <laughs> well, you'll be pleased to know that my niece is unattached. She is? <laughs> Uh, Felicia, I, I'm, I'm sorry. This really isn't the time or the place. Oh, to... honey, this is the perfect time. Maisie would have approved, really. She wanted everyone to be happy and to be loved. Believe me, Maisie would approve. Come on, let's talk to everybody. Okay. Come on. Vince is going to be devastated when he hears about Maisie. I guess he'll read about it in the newspaper. Just afraid when he does, he'll make a beeline back here. I'm sure the police have their fingers crossed. Where is Scott and Cheryl? Uh, gee, Mac, I never thanked you for sending Zach Edwards over to help me. Oh, well, I'm glad he could be of help. I'm a free woman. I couldn't ask for more than that. You still have to face charges, though, don't you? Yeah, so they tell me. Of course, we couldn't believe you would be guilty of trying to save Vince McKinnon. Everybody? I guess we're going to start. Uh, this won't be a typical memorial service. Macy wouldn't like it. So, for openers, let's just listen to something Nancy wants to say, okay? Well, it seems pretty strange being here and not seeing Maisie standing behind the bar or hustling orders out of the kitchen. But she's here with us. And we are all here because we love her. I'll never forget Maisie. She gave me my first job as a waitress back at Smiley's. I guess you could say I wasn't exactly eager to learn. But um, she was always patient. I mean, no matter how many orders I got wrong, she'd always say, don't worry, honey, Rome wasn't built in a day. She just was very special to people because she was a very special person. I mean, do you know of anybody on the face of this planet who could have brought my mom and Vince McKinnon together for a cup of coffee, much less a partnership in this restaurant? I mean, every time they were ready to kill each other, Maisie would jump in the middle and sweet-talk them into giving it another shot. Well, they did. And here we all are. And it all worked out pretty well, thanks to Maisie because she worked the very hardest. You see, having a place of her own was Maisie's dream. She didn't have a family, but she treated us all like family. And that's what she wants to all of us. A family. A little while ago, something very special happened to Maisie. It was the best thing in her life. She was open, and she was unafraid, and, and she fell in love. And the whole world knew about it, too, because Maisie wanted everybody to know about how happy she was. But there was somebody who didn't approve of this, who thought Maisie wasn't a respectable woman. And he wanted to punish her for this, and so he took Maisie's life. No one here will ever forget Maisie. I know I won't. I will always cherish her friendship and her loyalty. And I will always feel her warm smile in my heart. Can 
address is, is Macy's will. I'd, I'd like to read a paragraph, okay? Just one paragraph. Wait a minute. I'd do it if I can't see. Obviously, I'm dead and somebody is reading this. Uh, I never had much education or high ambitions. I've been content to be a waitress most of my life, waiting on people and soaking my aching feet at night. In turn, most people have been good to me. I don't think death is so terrible. We all have to go sometimes, so why go s sadly? Lift a glass. Listen to some music. Reach out and love the people around you. Your friend, Maisie. To our friend, Maisie. 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 Not so fast, Delaney. What can I do for you, Ada? I said when this was over, I was going to kick somebody's butt. I was talking about you. Look, Ada, it's no good to hold these things. Now, why don't you just come out and say what you mean? I always do. Excuse me. Do they have any lead on the, who the killer is, Captain? Tell the man, Delaney. No, no, not yet. Well, I've got everybody on the force out on the street. Too much, too late. Mom. I want you and Nancy to move in with us for a while. It's not safe here. It's not safe anywhere, and it won't be until the cops get their act together. <sighs> Ada, the department is on top of this thing. Starting now, Delaney, I'm going to harass you, nag you, bird dog you, and chip away at you every day until that filthy killer is brought to justice. Look, Ada, don't tell me my job. We have a killer loose, Captain. And you're wearing down the pavement looking for Vince McKinnon. What have you done for us lately? Why don't you ask Mac Corey? I'm talking to you. Mom, Mac has an announcement to make. Well, everybody, it's a difficult time. We've all lost a dear friend, a very dear woman. I know nobody's going to rest easy till the killer is found. I'd like to hurry that along. So I'm offering a reward for information leading up to the arrest and the conviction of the killer. $50,000. Well, I know that's not going to bring Maisie back, but it might just possibly save another friend of ours. And it seems to me like that's what life is about. Friendships, loving each other, sticking together. And our dear friend Maisie, she knew all about that sort of thing. MJ, wait. We gotta relax. Mitch, I just came from the house and. It's all right. It's serious with us. And you? Count me in. Did you find out anything? Well, I, I overheard something, but I'm not sure it'll mean anything. Let's get some privacy. I had a choice. People have to do what they have to do to survive. They gotta protect themselves, and that's all you did. You called this survival? You used to understand about that baby. Chad, I feel dirty. I feel like a dirty liar. Can you understand no, that? No, no, no way. You should have seen Adam when he looked at me. I don't think he believed one thing I told him about Linda. Well, he trusts you, doesn't he? Why should he? I violated that. I'm completely unworthy of his trust. It's funny, because I thought I had come so far. You have come far. No. I don't 
deserve a decent man like Adam. If he leaves me... Come on, baby. Don't talk like that. <sighs> Looks like you win again, Chad. Why would anybody take a yacht out in the middle of winter? It doesn't even make sense. Especially with all the ice on the lake. Why didn't I think of that? What? That's it. What? The tunnel, the dock, that's where they are. I, I don't understand. They're moving Donna and Michael by boat. Do you think Peter will be on board? What for? That would openly connect him to this whole thing. You're right about that. Are you all right? I know this hasn't been easy on you. No. And I'm sorry. Why? At least now I know the truth about my father and my brother. They did it. They took Donna. My own family. Very brave of you. What are you gonna do now? Yeah. Looks like I'm gonna take a cruise. This part of another world was brought to you by P.H. Balance Secret Antiperspirant. Now a new wide solid with a comfortable curved shape. Secret, strong enough for a man with curved comfort for women. Tonight on Matlock, it's a military cover-up only Matlock can bust. Then the romantic climax you've been waiting for. Remington and Laura are in love in a spectacular two-hour Remington steal tonight on NBC. Join us each weekday for the continuing story of Another World.